Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers, this is the Finding Arizona podcast, episode number 384. I'm your host, Jose. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Today's episode is with Shag Salon. That is with Amy and Michelle. Thank you both for coming in on the show. We appreciate you guys sharing your story and how you guys got started and everything in between. It's a very fun episode to get to know um, a salon like this and also I'm very happy to get into the world of hair. I really love having this diverse group of individuals come in through our door and share what they have to share with. So if you have anyone that you'd like to be on the show, let me jump into the businessy side of everything and tell you that you can hear every episode of our podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. We make it easy for you guys to follow us online. That is Finding Arizona Podcast on all social media platforms, Finding Arizona Podcast. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you let us know who you wanted next and we will try and make that happen. If you want to just send a direct email line to us, that's FindingArizonaPodcast at gmail.com and there you'll be able to get uh, us to contact you back. If you guys need anything, let us know what you need and we'll try and make that happen as well on top of which um if you'd like to also just do me a favor there's a blog and a vlog i would love for you to subscribe to and a newsletter as well so if you go to our website newsletter is the first thing that it'll ask you to sign up for and that's just so that you guys can get all the updates on who's coming in next what kind of discounts or things that we provide for our listeners that's always available on the newsletter and everything in between is also available on those newsletter you'll get routine updates on that on top of which the blog is a little bit more of the personal side the same thing with the vlog which is available on youtube so go check it out and find out what's going on with our family i can just let you know now little man is having a wonderful time he had thanksgiving we hosted finally for the first time this year Uh, we are very uh lucky and thankful and blessed to have such help like my parents come in and and share um the the load of work that goes into thanksgiving dinner and uh we had a wonderful time we had a lot of family friends come in as well um we had about i think 12 to 13 people here at the house so it was a lot of fun we had thanksgiving outside it was a good time everyone ate good and it was really 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 nice and uh so we're prepping for december which is christmas and that's already the christmas tree going up and the lights going up and the the stockings so it's really wonderful time for us here as a family and today is small business saturday so i encourage you guys all to go check out your local uh, businesses that are around you and give them a giving a helping hand by purchasing something for the holiday season so that being said we'll jump right into the episode episode number 384 with shag salon we will see you next time Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose, and as always, we bring in very special guests every week, and today is no different. I'm going to run down the line over here because now we have two of them sitting right next to each other. So I'm going to let them each introduce themselves, and then we're also going to allow you the, the – we'll go here first. Okay. And then we'll move on to you, and then we'll actually go talk about what we're going to be talking about today, the okay. salon world or the hair world, everything in between. Talking to you or talking to her? Um, no, talk to me. Okay. We'll be, it's fine. Okay. I always say this. It's like, you want to talk to me, but it's also, it's intimidating. Sometimes you forget that that thing is even there and on. So <clears throat> let's just talk okay. to each other. Yeah. So I'm Michelle Keoghan, yeah. co-owner of Shag Salon in Scottsdale. Nice. And I'm Amy Carlos. Amy and Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for telling us more about Shag. I'll tell you this. um, One of the things that I've always kind of been fascinated with is just kind of how people get started. And a lot of the times it's just I have this kind of thing in my head where it's like, oh, did they live, you know, uh, in a world where, you know, doing haircuts or having people around them that were professionals in that world um, kind of 
entice them to want to do the lifestyle or is it something that they just kind of fell into or things like that? So this, those types of things are very interesting to me. So give us a little bit of background on how this all came to both of your lives because I can that's imagine it might be two yeah, separate. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you do you want to go first? Sure. Yes. Um, well, it was really ugly growing up. Oh. <laughs> I, I doubt that. Oh, no, I, I don't was, think I so. was absolutely hideous. Okay, oh. we're going to need to prove Okay, we're going to need Okay, we're going to go right into I it. I mean, for mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. And then my mom had zero sense of style. Huh. And I was like, if I'm going to do this. Actually, don't put that in there. I think my mom follows us. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, you know what? No, mom, mom needs literally, the hard truth like, right now. I, I know. And I was literally like, I got to figure this out on my own. I had naturally curly mm-hmm. hair. I was like little orphan Annie. It is naturally red, not this red. But oh, okay. Yeah. And you were searching for style. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just knew at a really young age. And then, um, yeah, put a lot of time into it when I was younger, like straightening the hair before straight flat irons mm-hmm. were a thing. Nice. And um, yeah, just, I don't know. Playing around with yeah. the different kind yeah. of looks and, then, and I styles. Mean, I pretty much never veered from that. Like, okay. I have a paper written when I was in first grade that said I was going to be a hairstylist. Aww. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And here I, I am. That. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I like that. Um, my, I, my, I didn't probably start so young. I, I think that um, when I was a senior in high school and my friends were making college plans, yeah, I, it finally dawned on me like, oh, I have no idea, <laughs> no gotta, idea. I gotta pick something. <laughs> oh yeah, and so even though sometimes I would give some kitchen haircuts, mm-hmm. um, I had never been or seen a nice salon okay. or a high end kind of place like that. Yeah. So I think that kind of prevented me from going, oh, this is something really, really cool looking because it was just kind of, you know, chain mm-hmm. salons in my yeah. town. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we have some really funny family photos from a lot of those places. <laughs> so um, when I was in, so I went to community college and mm-hmm. absolutely hated it. Just could not take it. Totally you know? understandable. And I, I did a tour at a cosmetology school and I thought, oh, okay. Yeah, this is this is definitely where I want to be. <laughs> this is my alley. <laughs> oh, so amazing and so much fun. And it was just, you know, it wasn't um, sitting yeah. um, in a classroom. Yeah. And um, I didn't know that that was just not for me. But I realized um, when I started there, I had to get up and I have to be moving. Oh, got it. Yeah. Got it. You're so, kind of like my brother. My brother is the similar fashion where he's just like, the classroom isn't, isn't his yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think at a certain age, um, you grow up a little bit and you realize what other industries are. Because mm-hmm. when you're a kid, you don't really pay attention. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so I kind of, I wanted to do something creative, mm-hmm. but I just couldn't see what that was going to be. Yeah. So it, that, that. Cleared it up for me for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. That's funny. It's like uh you didn't really know your journey where you didn't really know and then you found it. It's kinda mm-hmm. like me where it's like I went to college mm-hmm. and I thought I was going into architecture, but then I ended up doing landscape architecture, which is in the similar vein. Yeah. It's just yeah. the, you know, w- w- you know, you had to find the the class or something that yeah. like was, oh, this is more enticing. This is something yeah. more of what I can do or what I want to do creatively. And then you want to study it. Yeah. And then, then you you're want, on your yeah, way. Yeah. Then it's easy. It's easy sailing from yeah. there. So I'm gonna move over back over to you, Amy here or not Amy. Yeah, yeah. Amy, Amy, I can get it. Yeah. I'll get it. Um, so it seemed like for you, the techniques and kind of playing around with the different techniques and messing with style and playing around with that was more of like, you know, trial and error, sort of speak. Yes. And for you, it sounded like, you know, you were interested as soon as you started playing around that it was becoming more enticing for you to want to do the career mode and kind of go into that vein. What was the first thing that you did that made you feel like, oh, I can do this as a career? Um, I think it was when I was in high school and yeah. I would have friends that like were getting ready for dances and, you know, just messing with their hair in the mirror and then okay. they were like frustrated and I was like, oh, I can do it. Yeah. You know, like show me a picture. And okay. I feel like that's where my strong suit is. I'm yeah. not really great at like if somebody's just like oh I don't know whatever you want like if but if you give me an image and yeah. you're like I want to look like this I can recreate it okay and nice. um so it started with 
high school updos and nice. prom type hair. And I was like, they were they loved it. Yeah. And they just <laughs> loved it. And I felt so good yeah. seeing them feel good about what I created. The joy of it. Yeah. 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 So how did, now I have to ask this is because you guys went, you know, did different separate things. How did you come together? How was the meeting of the minds and what was the first kind of meeting like for the two of you and how you guys connected? We met in a salon okay. in town and it was a great experience for a long time. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be this lovely group of people. We, for real. Like yeah. those women were my home. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Amy was At going through crazy them. stuff. And a lot of people were going through crazy stuff. Yeah, they and, called and it like the the um, home of the wayward women. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it was like everyone yeah. in the salon yeah. kind of had a lot of like life crazy yeah. situations. Oh my gosh! That we just created this bond mm -hmm. of like pillars of support. Okay. And nice. I don't even think we all realized what that everyone was going through yes. crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But now, like that back room was very important. Got it. You know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the really cool thing about being a hairstylist is that, um, you know, you hear people like, oh, leave it at the door, you mm -hmm. know, but it, it literally, you can walk into work and go, I'm not going to think about what's going on with me mm -hmm. all day long yeah. because it's not actually about the hair. It's about people. Yeah. It's, I definitely yeah. feel that. Yes. Yeah. So you have new people coming to see you and you're trying to make their day. Yeah. Um, all day long. Yeah. And if you don't want to talk about yourself, that's, it's no problem. You can, it's very easy. you, you yeah, can, yeah, gu exactly. you can guide that conversation exactly. and you can kind of whew, take a minute, you know, yeah, and then go cry in the back room with the rest of the girls. Totally. Yeah. Have a snack. Um, but it's a really great place to be because you want like that person's experience in your chair to be the best mm -hmm. part of their day. Yeah. So there's a lot of energy that goes into that and you don't really have time for yourself. Yeah. Um, which is a good thing sometimes. Yes. I, I agree with you because there's definitely in the male hair cutting realm that I know of is that I typically see it a lot of the times where guys go to their barber to have a conversation yeah. to get away mm -hmm. from their stresses of the world and have that kind of camaraderie and, mm -hmm. and get to talking about the things that, you know, they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So definitely feel that aspect of it and definitely understand in certain cultures too, that they, that is where a lot of kids grow up too to understand mm -hmm. the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, they go either to their family's barber or they go into that shop to kind of get away from the outside world mm -hmm. and, and get used to, um, other males or females yeah. that are going to help them grow up and help them understand the world a little bit better. So yeah. I understand and appreciate what you guys do on a, on a, like what you do daily and kind of having to have those moments and those conversations and switch off your personal mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's like, I think what you also said, the back room is also kind of as important mm -hmm. between the camaraderie of the girls that are your coworkers and that you guys are, having those conversations on a, on a daily basis mm -hmm. and having that camaraderie coming together. So now I want to know is like, okay, you, you brought into us the aspect of like meeting in the back room and having, it's like, what made you guys again, say, let's step away from, you know, working for someone else and work for ourselves. And what was that like for, for you guys? Like saying, okay, let's do it together. Let's, mm -hmm. let's try something like this together. Well, I want to make sure to never say that it's not scary. It's not a huge risk. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't go do things on their own when they have an idea yeah. because there's so many reasons not to. Yeah. And there's so many um, things that can go wrong. So if you are talking to an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you all the reasons why you should do it. Yeah. And if you're talking to someone who works for a company or someone else, um, they're not going to understand that. So, yeah. um, being business owners, um, mm -hmm. is kind of hard every day yep. and pretty awesome too. So uh, lots of decisions yeah. constantly, constantly, yeah. you know, so it's a lot, but, um, we learned a lot of really great lessons from the salon that we met at. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a salon group of 13. I mean, it was multi-million. It was that's amazing. A, that's a yeah. big group. It, yeah. It's considering. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. A lot of the ways they did things, 
um, were great um, lessons for us. Mm -hmm. And then all the other stuff that we don't like, we don't do. Yeah. There you go. There <laughs> so you go. we dropped a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. And we can because mm -hmm. we're one salon. Yeah. You know, when you're 13, you have to have a lot of rules. Yeah. So um, the industry has changed okay. a ton. Yeah. Um, and so we've adapted and um, changed a lot of things about our salon. Because we're stylists and we're still behind the chair. Yeah. So um, we know what, what people need um, and want. Nice. For the most part. Yeah. What would you say about that? Um, <laughs> Being a business owner in general. But yeah, like she said, it's it's one of the scariest things I've done, but also one of the most rewarding mm. and uh, fulfilling, you know, to, awesome. to be out on, out on our own. Um, and I feel super grateful to, to be partners with Michelle. Like oh, she's you. somebody I've always kind of had on this pedestal. And so it feels, <laughs> feel it feels pretty great. To... Well, I don't have a lot of fear. <laughs> so I go. really work <laughs> much better with a partner. Nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> Which, and I need her because she's been great at pushing me out of my comfort zone. I see. And I love that. Yes. And it's you guys been... are yin and yang. Yeah. yeah. That's a really yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that's how I feel about, you know, having my partner and my wife be helpful and into me creating this into more of a business. I I'm the creative one. I'm like mm -hmm. the one that's like, I started this off of a meeting, encountering business owners and entrepreneurs and doing t-shirt printing for them yeah. mm -hmm. and had conversations with them mm -hmm. and, you know, getting to know them a little bit better Then it moved into like, Oh, why don't you guys do this on the radio? Why don't you guys like me asking them like all these questions and I'm like, Oh, it's expensive. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, all of these other things. And I was like, well, I always grew up like that's everyone deserves a chance to tell their story. That's how I always grew up. And yeah. I wanted to give that back into the world and give them an opportunity to do so. And so for me, it was like, Oh, I, I need to do something like mm -hmm. this. And so I was listening to podcasts at the time. They fairly weren't as well known as they are now, but I was like, Oh, I think I could try something like this. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's uh, something I can do. And so, you know, took it upon myself to buy the equipment and I was like, Hey, do you want to try this? And yeah. they're like, yeah, let's do it. And they all came back to like, Hey, thanks. That was really great. And that was yeah. like oh, so much fun. So yeah. I was like, I think I got something here. Then you're like, Oh my God. Okay. Do I have a business? Yeah. Now? Like that. Yeah. Exactly. It took until meeting her. She's like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Like, let me help you. And she had a mm -hmm. business at the time. I was so nervous when I Oh, see, so she had a business. Yeah, she yeah. had a business. She's she was like, already She's like, no, 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 this is how we're yeah, doing this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This isn't a hobby. <laughs> so it went, from, it went from her asking me my Wi-Fi password. That's how we met <laughs> at a co-working office. And so she was working on her business and interviewing people. And I was working on my landscape stuff with another partner. And it turned into... Hey, I have this thing. Don't don't laugh at me. And she's like, "What is it?" And I was like, "It's a podcast." And she's like, "I love podcasts." Yeah. <laughs> so she spent the entire first couple of days listening to to all of them, and then she took it upon herself to, to start doing photography, and and then it went into like, "Let me help you business management this yeah. thing." And so now we're it's snowballed. Now we yeah. have a family. Now we're married. Now we bought a house and all these things. And it's just keep going, been, keep going, yeah, yeah. keep going, keep yeah. going. Yeah. And so we, mm. uh, you know, we, we love what we do. It's like, for me, it's, this is a fun dynamic of like, mm -hmm. again, I would never get to meet the people that I meet without it first mm -hmm. yeah. off. And mm -hmm. then secondly, I think it's again, only fair to have the stories be told it's fair it's like you guys you've earned your spot in the spotlight and so why not have that someone cheerlead for you yeah love that that's yeah. cool thank you um so you guys are so fun and so like crazy awesome together that i think that this works out really well as far as a dynamic and a business goes um i'd love to hear some challenging parts of this business because one might think oh it says you know it's hair cutting or it's a, you know, styling, it's all these simple things. No, there's so much <laughs> more that goes into it than that. Give us the ins and outs, like, you know, supply chain and mm -hmm. um, all these other aspects like overhead for you guys. One of the other things I'd love to understand too, is you brought up this idea of the industry changing, especially I'd love to understand before and after COVID mm -hmm. um, because of all of the things that you guys had to be required to do mask wise, mask mandate and things like that. But 
how much of that spilled over after COVID has now gone away a little bit? Well, what really has spilled over is the shift in the industry. Yeah. So during COVID, what happened is there was this big pull to have your client one-on-one, nobody else around. Mm -hmm. And a lot of salons, well, of course, we all had to close for about six weeks. Yeah. We never knew. I I still remember. Yeah. It's like traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know it was going to be six weeks, right? Yeah. You guys thought it was like, oh, it's only like a couple of days. We'll be fine. They'll come back. They won't forget about us. uh, No, I locked the door and cried and walked to my car. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was all for nothing. That was a lot of work and blood, sweat, and tears. It was so sad. And of course, you know, uh, not alone on that. But um, what happened is hairstylist said, why don't a few of us split mm-hmm. a studio mm-hmm. and just w- pick what day we want to work? Yeah. And then it'll be very affordable and our we'll just have our client one-on-one. Um, and that is the trend clients don't want to be in a salon anymore. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Plus we don't know, you know, maybe, maybe the salon owner was perceived of not taking care of their staff during COVID Mm -hmm. or closed or whatever, or, you know, a lot of hairstylists are women. And maybe they said, you know what, I'm only going to work two days now because I have to stay home home with my kids. Okay. So big push to studios. Mm -hmm. And then you saw salon studios popping up (laughs) new buildings Mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, and so that's where you'll find most of our (laughs) hairstylists in town. Mm -hmm. Um, so one reason we, um, well, we love hairdressers. Yeah. We love business owners. We love women. We love our clients, but it's really about the hairdressers Mm -hmm. right now Mm -hmm. for us. Um, and, and supporting hairstylists because what's happened is that they've been in studios now for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not getting education like they used to because it's expensive and it just started coming back in person. And so if you have to pay for it yourself, you might, you might miss it. You might let, you know, you might miss a few. And so, what we do is we have a huge fusion of any way that you could possibly get paid at our salon. Mm -hmm. We accept. Okay. Are you a renter? Are you an employee? Are you, you know, it doesn't matter. We don't care. We treat you the same. So we have a full educational calendar for the whole year where we bring people in. Like we're extremely supportive. We want to know, what are your aspirations? Mm-hmm. Do you want to be on stage? Do Good, because we know people. We will help you. Nice. Do you want to be an educator? Great. Let us help you. We know people. And so um, the support is huge because we think that's what everybody needs right now. Absolutely. And, you know, trends always, you know, they're, you know, they, they change, right? So mm-hmm. if everyone's by themselves alone in a studio, pretty soon they're going to want a little bit more of a team environment again. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a big change. Um, Yeah. In my experience, I also was one of the stylists that left a salon setting and went to a studio. Yeah. And I thought that I loved it. I was just like, this is great. Mm -hmm. I don't have to feed off of anybody's energy. I can just do my own thing and come and go. And then almost three years into it, I started realizing like my creativity was so stagnant. I was just, I had nothing feeding yeah. that energy. Sometimes you, know, you, you forget see, like yes, that having that It was that like having variety. the other girls around. And although I may not have realized it at the time that I would see that a color and be like, oh, wow, that's really pretty. What was that formula? You know, and just mm-hmm. having that energy around you mm-hmm. to, to get ideas off of and everything. Yeah. And I just felt so stagnant and dead yeah in my in my studio and that's kind of when I was just like I'm stuck I don't know what's going on I'm losing passion for the industry I don't know met up with Michelle and started talking and then I realized like I need to be around other stylists other people and that positive upbeat Saturday morning you know really gets for me personally and I think a lot of hairdressers are this way Mm -hmm. we're people people you yeah. know, we yeah. need that yeah. to to stay energized and alive and creative. And yep. so I think people forget sometimes the creative aspect of this is when you feed yourself through, you know, the like looking at different things and getting feedback or getting yes. getting um, 
understanding someone else's realm just a little bit because as a designer myself, it's just like when I'm around other people, other creatives and understand their style and mm-hmm. understand what they're working on or trying to get, you know, uh, you'll grab little you things, grab pieces. you grab yeah. pieces mm-hmm. and those all feed back into your own creativity mm-hmm. and help you out with um, answering certain challenges yes. when you have to be creative in that yeah. moment yeah. of like creativity of like, yeah. oh, I remember such and such did mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. and yes. I can go ahead and pull that out yeah. of the hat. And then that's part of your style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And then I realized like I, I wasn't even my like, clients could feel it. Mm-hmm. Right? They could okay. feel yeah. because once I got back in and Michelle and I had partnered and we started doing this, you know, they were like, wow. Like the shift in you, it's so fun to be around. We're so (laughs) proud of you, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I think a lot of stylists might be, you know, in that situation that are in studios right now. And they're not aware of like, oh, well, I could have the best of both. Mm -hmm. I could be in a salon where I would have support from, you know, Mm -hmm. other people and get that creative energy flowing again and still be able to make my own schedule. Be as independent. Be as independent as I want in a beautiful space and mm-hmm. yeah, and feel supported. I love that. Okay, so. we're getting we're we're talking a lot of the the kind of creativity side. I'd love to get like supply chain, kind of like the nitty gritty stuff, mm-hmm. and like being the business owners mm-hmm. of the actual brick and mortar that you guys have. Um, give us a little bit of like the daily task, some of the things that you do to cater to your clientele and make sure that like all, all the things are running. Cause I'd love to understand that aspect. Not a lot of people. Yeah. So there's, I, I kind of think of it as, is three different things. So we have, um, our retail. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's like our store. Yeah. And then we have our service, mm-hmm. right? That's our, our service business. Yep. And then we have our staff, mm-hmm. um, which in, in this, and this, like the supplies, Mm-hmm. that the staff need. Got it. Right. I mean, Amy and I can make a dollar out of 15 cents, whatever's in the back room. We got it. <laughs> we, listen, we, we, it we don't care. Yes. Yes. But for everyone else there, you know, we need things to be stocked and, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. um, ready for that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of funny little things that we have to order that, mm-hmm. you know, you wouldn't think of. So we have anything from gloves to boxes of foils. We yeah. buy those in 500 yeah, sheets. Yeah. We buy 10 of those yeah. at a time. Yeah. Right. And so some of the stuff is coming from Amazon business, Got it. Uh, which now has professional salon supplies, which oh, is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. And some of it is coming from beauty supply. Um, we have two reps that we work with. Um, and that are amazing. And we have very high end retail, which happens to be from Australia, two different, two different lines. Um, and so we have kind of, I I kind of like to separate it into like three different categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, helps you keep it all in order. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) I mean, there's probably 10 categories, right. Um, but we, um, yeah. And then there's, you know, building maintenance and Mm -hmm. a long list of things that we, don't have yet that we should probably buy one by one. Yeah. Right. And that all, all takes research and mm-hmm. money time and, care. and time. Yes. And, you know, just everything is so much, um, so many things when you're a business owner, you're doing it for the first time. Yeah. Yep. And then, oops, I was, I wasted money. That was not a good decision. Yeah. Trust me. I've <laughs> right? definitely yes. been, right. You know, when you're recording and for our end here, it's like, you know, the equipment that goes in the microphones and, stuff mm-hmm. like that people don't really you know get it in the long terms but it's like yeah it all adds up like everything it does. adds up, adds it up. Does. And at the end of the day if you're not you know researching taking the time and care and effort to understand the product or something that you're going to bring into yeah your... and you can't do it every time yeah sometimes exactly. you just need some stuff this yeah. is highly rated let's go yep exactly oh my gosh uh, so trust. yeah <laughs> i'm with you on there yeah and that's what I love about Michelle because she is like, that's where she's taught me. Like she's, she's really brave and just like, you have to get it really wrong sometimes to get it really right. Exactly. And I have always been one that's like, I'm so scared to take any kind of step whatsoever. The perfectionist. I'm afraid of getting it wrong. And <laughs> yeah. Michelle is like mm-hmm. pushing me to like make a decision, Amy. Yeah. This is yours. Make a decision. And it's yeah. like, 
push the button terrifying but also <laughs> so liberating <laughs> yeah and great i'm yeah. with you i'm yeah. the one yes. that gets like super terrified of like pushing the button and yeah. then it's like just push the button just do it just yeah do it. and then it we, you know we've had moments of like that was a mistake yeah All definitely right. what now what are we gonna do yeah moving, to, moving yeah. on yeah like yeah. <laughs> and that's that's how business works i mean yes. you, you mm-hmm. get so caught up and just like doing but you know what in the mistakes you'll definitely either find the silver lining and like oh that worked mm-hmm. or it turns out to be a blessing in disguise because yeah. Yeah. you didn't a need that thing mm-hmm. that you messed up on or b it turns into a way for you to do something even better than it was before yeah. yes and it's the same with clients or unhappy clients mm-hmm. you know i used to be so i always say hairstylists have big egos, meaning yeah. that if you don't like your hair, we're ugh, so affected by it. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Yes. You can see that. Yeah. I mean, oh, God. It's, a, it's uh, you take pride in your work. Yeah. Right? And then you're like, like, you know what? I think I think I'm in the wrong industry. You know, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to wait tables. I'm going to yeah. do that. Yeah, I'm, literally, I don't know. If I, I don't think I'm going to be. Anymore. I don't think I'm going to be good at that either. But <laughs> I'm clearly, tr- it seems a, a lot better than what I'm doing yeah, right yeah. now. The world is crumbling. So, um, you know, after you go through that, and then you know, people around you go through that, and mm-hmm. the way that you um, finally land on this is how I'm going to deal with it when that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, and then when you have a staff you need to get that together real quick. Yeah. And in fact, you have to have a policy in place, you know, yeah. and, and this is where policies come from too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so if people are super late for their appointments a few times, okay, now you're a repeat offender. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we have a policy, everyone. This is, you know, this yep. is just what these things yeah. come from. Yep. And so, you know, if you're a big corporate company, like even you started somewhere, you know, yep. one by one too. Yep. But um, so, you know, that is a part of it, making mistakes. Um, and then how you not don't get down on yourself about them. Like the first few times you might, and just, you know, this is how it is. Every day is not going to be rainbows and butterflies. Absolutely. You know, how do you, so how, like, again, you guys being yin and yang, there has (laughs) to be a level of communication on, on both of your ends to kind of help one another either, like get past the mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so how do you guys, like when something bad or something um, different happens that you weren't, you know, prepared for, how do you guys come together and have those communication conversations about like, look, we're going to get past this. We're going to work. Oh, I think we're, we just both grumble about it. Just like, wow, that, that was ridiculous. That's what that back room (laughs) is for. It might be maybe one person's fault more than the other one, but we're going to just agree that that sucked. Yep. And we won't be doing that again. Okay. You know, yeah. I mean, we definitely yeah. like. And both Michelle doesn't grumble. know this, but like I grew up in a home where it was like, I, this is why I'm terrified to, mm-hmm. to make a decision because I would get like, if, if it was wrong, mm-hmm. like I felt like the, the whiplash or the, you know, the <laughs> disappointment, the dis- it, it yeah. was like, I just couldn't handle it. And yeah. Michelle will just be like, well, that happened. Okay. There's not like beating me up of like, that was the wrong decision. I'm just or, like, well, know, that looks like stupid. That. We yeah. should right, not we do that. Redo that. You know, <laughs> yeah. but the way she, you know, approaches it or handles it with me, I feel like, again, empowers me to be like, okay, okay. it's nice. all right to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. here we go. Yeah. You know, like it happened. Let's redirect and I love keep that. going. No, it's okay. I'm just so, protecting myself. Yeah. The next time I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, re- appreciate I'm it, reacting you know? to you really yeah. nicely. Yes. Awesome. I mean, again, it's yeah. like that's, again, working with your significant other, you know, we have to have these kind of conversations where it's like, oh, that didn't go great. And like, mm-hmm. we have to have a kind mm-hmm. of a end of day or end of week conversation like, well, this wasn't didn't work, but we're also looking forward to these types of things for next time, or this is the type of thing we should do next time and things like that. So it's definitely something that I always kind of look at, especially when you're a duo sort of, or even a trio Mm -hmm. or like multiple heads to a, to a business. Because Mm -hmm. again, when you're a single solo entrepreneur, you can make the mistakes and you only have to look in the mirror to talk. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. But then you don't have someone to go, what do you think? Yeah, this one exactly. or that one. Exactly. So it's really important that we are in charge of different things mm-hmm. and that we don't have to ask each other permission mm-hmm. to 
do those things that we're in charge of. Yeah. Because there's only so many hours in the day. Absolutely. And this is yeah. why partnership's so important because I, I can't do it on my own. She can't do it on her own. Yeah. It's too much to do. Yeah. We're moms. We're busy. Like, and it's such a distraction. Like when you're with your client mm -hmm. to have just this overwhelming amount of stuff yeah. that needs to be done, Yes, yeah. you know, and yeah. just to there's, know there's not two of you, but when yeah. you have a partner, this is my stuff. That's her stuff. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do my stuff today. Yes. Yeah. You, now you brought up something that I want to get into is your families and just kind of like your significant others and your partners. Um, you know, what was like having that first conversation? Like, look, we're just going to make our own thing and we're going to do our own thing on and start a business. <clears throat> what was that? Like, and how do your families feel about you guys now doing this together for as long as you have? Um, I think that, um, you know, it's cute. Sometimes my husband will say, oh, I mentioned you at work. I said this. Oh, my yeah. wife, my wife owns a salon. I'm like, oh, God, that sounds so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was Did it? you feel cool saying yeah. it to you? <laughs> yes. So funny. See, and I don't have a significant other. So for me, it was like a terrifying risk to be like if this doesn't succeed I don't have like, I'm not eating yes yeah. I don't have anything to fall back on yeah. and somebody to be like hey we got this but my two daughters were definitely like mom we're so proud of you oh, you know like awesome. this is that's amazing. really great yeah feeling. and it it's it's pretty great yeah awesome. and again also mm -hmm. I'm like because I don't have that it won't fail mm -hmm. right yeah. <laughs> There right. is no other option. Yes. So yeah. your girls come to you for your, for their hair. Yes. And then yeah. your one comes to, does she like coming in to work with you? Or? So she, um, yes, I do her hair sometimes at work. Um, but I don't do my boy's hair. Yeah. My exactly. boys all go to a barbershop. Yeah. They're probably mm -hmm. like, I don't want my mom to do it too. Mm -hmm. They're like, so, like that. That's how I was. It's like, I stopped getting my hair cut from my parents. Oh, very early on. I was, like, <laughs> I was done. Yeah. I was done after probably eight or something yeah. like yeah. that. No, they, um, I mean, there's this super masculine barbershop. Nice. Shout out to Cutthroat. Okay. In nice. Yeah. Super masculine name. And listen, first of all, there's a bar in there. Nice. Yeah. Very loud rap music. <laughs> um, and like some <laughs> shoot em up movie on the, you know, flat screen. Yeah. Yep. And there's my eight year old and he's so still. He doesn't move a muscle <laughs> and it's, they're adorable. Yeah. They're, we've seen a bunch of people now and I just love sitting back in that barbershop and watching. Mm -hmm. It's it. I mean, I will, I don't touch the clippers. Yeah. Amy would, but like, I don't, <laughs> Yeah. but I don't, I don't, I don't do it. So yeah, there's no way I'm going to practice on them. You mean like you, you give males. Yeah, haircut? I do. Okay. I do men and women. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I thought she, I thought you meant literally like, Go into their barbershop and start touching their stuff. <laughs> like, no, hey, no, no. What, what, what you got here? Yeah. Like, like, and I would do that as well. I tried so. not to say I was a hairstylist for a long time, but then I think I said the word texture one day nice. and they picked up on it. Yeah, yeah, they picked up on it. They were like, oh, okay, we They're see like, you. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So <laughs> as we're kind of you know moving forward, the like, uh, I, I like to ask these questions about goals and things like that for your business and um, what you guys look forward to in the next couple of years or what you're trying to strive for so that our listeners who are watching and listening can help you out and maybe make love it happen. That. Yeah. Love that. We're definitely looking for hairstylists nice. um, of all, you know, of all types, yeah. all ages. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to, helping just bring people up in the salon. Like some of my awesome mentors that I've had in nice. my past, I've had a lot of great people, um, and just helping other people succeed. I have a lot of clients and I, I am, I'm not wanting to be the busiest one in the salon anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking to help, you know, move some of those clients over and help other nice. people grow. So I'm just like really ready for like, a busy crazy mm -hmm. salon right and yeah. i mean i can just yes. like be directing it and helping everyone and i love that because yeah. you you seem like you, you know you want to be the mom that helps mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. you know the mm -hmm. the little ones the little barbers i, I wanted like to be the star for yeah. a long time i wanted to be the busiest <laughs> one the biggest producer i have the most clients right yeah. it's the ego thing yeah because that means i'm good exactly and I now i'm that. like oh yeah i'm tired now 
Yeah, I want to. Yeah, exactly. I want to be. But you also want to educate. You want to be. You want to mm-hmm. make sure that they know what they have in mm-hmm. store for them, yeah. so that yes. they're not blindsided, mm-hmm. sort of speak. Where it's like, yeah. hey, look, be prepared with all of this knowledge, so that I don't have to be looking after you mm-hmm. and like you're well prepared. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think like it'd be nice if our salon was a place like the one that Michelle and I met at. Okay. Where it's like yeah. maybe they're going through some some tough times in their life and we are, you know, the the camaraderie. The camaraderie group. Yeah. where it's like, man, I didn't realize it, but that was my home for yeah. a while. And yeah. they really helped me and without them. They look mm-hmm. back on you it know? with fond yeah. memories and things yeah. like that. It's great to see like you have a couple new people and like yeah. they're starting to bond. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. I, I love that too. Mm-hmm. Cause for me, it's like the stories that I always say this, like I love making friends with this podcast cause it helps me stay connected with them. And that's what I've intended it to do. I don't want to be the guy that's like, tell me your story. Okay. We'll never talk again. Like mm-hmm. that's not mm-hmm. me. I yeah. want to be your cheerleader in the mm-hmm. sense that like, I want to come you know, hang out with you one day or if like anything, like at least have a conversation down the road and be mm-hmm. like, Hey, we we're doing better. We're, we're way different or we, you know, way Absolutely. like something else down the road where it's like hearing the stories kind of turn another chapter, yeah. turn another yeah. chapter, mm-hmm. and- which is kind of what I think. I mean, in our industry being behind the chair or maybe even being mm-hmm. the business owner, it's yeah. like, we, we love making people feel good. Like, yeah. how can mm-hmm. I make your day better? Exactly. And so, I mean, there's just a different aspect of it now mm-hmm. being a business owner, mm-hmm. you know, and providing that for the stylist yeah. just as much as the client. So. Well, I think that you two together are making a very big difference in the, the employees that you guys have and what you guys are doing right now. And so I wish you nothing but the best of luck for the future to come. And I have no doubt that it's going to only get bigger and brighter and way a lot. Cool. Kudos for both of you. And I, I wish you guys the best. So um, towards the end here, we're going to let you guys tell everyone where they can find you online, all your social media handles. Go ahead and tell the people what you got. Okay. So we are at Shag Scottsdale and all info is in our Instagram. We don't have a website because it's almost 2024 and we don't yeah. want one. Yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. again, it's like right. the it's, things change. Also, it's like, you, you know, you don't need certain yeah. aspects. Like it's crazy. I, it's kind of crazy how much the younger group, the younger yeah. millennial, even Gen X or whatever. It's yeah. like, they don't even have Facebook. They don't yeah, even use Facebook. Yeah. I know they're guiding TikTok. us, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're really, guiding us. Yeah. They're like not pigeonholing. The word is, uh, optimizing. There we go. They're optimizing yeah. a lot of these like re- the highways to where they can find you and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah. And then, um, we, we love hairstylists. So everybody, you know, stop by and have a tour and say hi and it's a beautiful space. Yep. We're see really if proud of it. Yeah. it feels Crossroads, good to you. Where are you yeah. guys located? We're just about on Scottsdale and Shea. So it's 71st. Nice. We're looking at um, Handlebar Jays. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So those who do know the area will yes. be able to know where you're exactly yeah. where you guys are at. All right. So we do have an outro for us here. You can listen to every episode of our podcast. We do have a website at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. We make it easy for you guys to connect with us through social media. So everything, we're on every platform under Finding Arizona Podcast. Last but not least, if you want to just get directly to us, the straight fastest way would be FindingArizonaPodcast at gmail.com. And with that, we always say goodbye to our friends sitting with us, but we also say kisses, hugs, and belly rubs to our four-legged friends. We will see you. <laughs> next time. Bye. Thank you. Oh, I never really thought about it. <laughs> I didn't like that. Did you have your coffee? Okay. Don't need it, honey. Oh. Natural. Just All kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love this energy between you two. You guys are like sisters. <laughs> oh. well, we don't have a choice anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We're married now. Yep. Yep. That's Stuck right. at the hip together <laughs> now, yep. right? That's right.